What is going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Jeremy. Today we are going to be discussing all the different abbreviations and lingo in the Funko Pop vocabulary. So check this out. My goal today is just strictly going to be to help you break down the Funko Pop vocabulary, what all the different abbreviations mean, what all the different lingo stands for, and just so you have a better understanding when you see something on a Facebook post or an Instagram page, so that, you know, if you might not have known what it was before, you're gonna know after today, at least I hope so. Now keep in mind that this is not an all-inclusive list. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm not perfect. It's actually not hard to believe at all, I don't even know. Like, if anyone will tell you, I'll be the first to tell you that I'm not perfect, I'm not a robot, I'm not AI, I'm gonna miss things. So that's where I want you to fill in. I want you to comment down below if there's anything that you come across that I might've missed or something that maybe I didn't explain quite the way that you would have explained it. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And then uh, just like the video if it was helpful for you and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate the support. I love to see the support. It, it makes me smile. I was told I need to smile more. So I'm gonna smile. I'm really bad at smiling. But anyways, would love to see the support. Uh, let's just get started, I guess. It's probably fair to assume that there's really like three three big terms for uh, Funko Pops in, in general. So I'm not gonna talk too much about these. What I'm gonna do is link a video to my Funko Pop stickers video because that really breaks down all three of these words I'm about to throw at you. So we've got chase, we've got exclusives, and we've got commons. So just talk about it a little bit very quickly. Again, I break it down a lot more thorough in the sticker video. So if you want to learn more about those, feel free to watch that video. Um, but basically a chase is just a different variant. It's usually a one in six shot. And then you got exclusives, store exclusives, convention exclusives, stuff like that. And then uh, just a common Funko Pop, which would be anything that you can get at any store that sells Funko Pops. So Walmart, Target, anything. They don't have stickers usually. They're just common, regular Pops. Again, feel free to reference the video talking about stickers that I'm gonna link above. The next word we're gonna talk about loves to get thrown around in the community. I hear it all the time. It is the word vaulted. So in case you don't know, a vaulted Funko Pop is no longer printed. Funko does not make them anymore. They're not printing the boxes. They're not making the vinyls, nothing. It's completely done. Every once in a while, just to really ruffle feathers, Funko will re-release a vaulted Funko Pop. It doesn't happen very often, but it happened recently and it made a lot of people mad. But in general, if you hear the term vaulted, it just means that it's not, it's not printed anymore. So sometimes this does make the pop a lot more valuable once it's been vaulted because there's a, a level of scarcity with it where it, you know, you're not gonna buy it from the store anymore. So we actually have a little bit of show and tell. I'm gonna show you a vaulted Funko Pop. This is Santa Claus from Rudolph. Now they did, you're probably thinking, well, Jeremy, they just came out with a bunch of new Funko Pops of Rudolph. Well, sure they did, but they changed Santa Claus. I think they actually changed the name too. I'll confirm, I'll put a picture of the, uh, the new Santa Claus uh, on the screen so you can see the difference. This one is vaulted. Actually, all the Rudolph ones are vaulted. All the new ones do look a little bit different. They have a different box print. Um, so this one's not crazy expensive, but it is, it is more expensive than retail. So pretty much if you hear the term vaulted, typically it just means the pop is no longer made. An abbreviation that you're gonna see a lot, like a ton, probably I would argue you're probably gonna see this more than any other words or terms except for like Funko and Funko Pop and um, maybe like Chase Common, blah, 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 blah. But uh, it would be PPG. So PPG stands for Pop Price Guide. Uh, this is a general guide to refer to when you're looking at value. This is not a set in stone value. 
Just because PPG is $40 on a Funko Pop does not mean that you have to pay $40 for that Funko Pop. It's just a general guideline. I do highly recommend like checking um, like eBay and Mercari just to cross-reference the, the hobby. If you're using HobbyDB for, to check the PPG, uh, that was a lot of like HobbyDB, PPG, like a lot of, that was weird, sounded weird. But anyways, HobbyDB is a site that um, updates their database based like their PPG on pops. So a lot of people use HobbyDB, I use it, but sometimes it is wrong. Sometimes it doesn't update in time or sometimes a fake pop will get in there and it'll change the pricing. But just keep in mind, it's not set in stone and it really is not super accurate if you're looking to purchase a really big heavy hitter pop, like a really expensive one. So don't look at it and think, oh man, I can't pay 150 for this pop because PPG says it's only worth 120. It's not what it means, it's just a guideline. These next terms that I'm gonna list off, we're gonna, we're gonna fire through them pretty quick because again, I'll link it one more time. These are all talked about in my sticker video. So I don't wanna really spend too much time on them when I can just uh, send you to a different video that explains it a lot more thorough than I'm gonna do right now. So keep in mind, if you want more detail on the terms I'm gonna about to discuss, there's a lot more information in the video above. So you've got flocked, that just means it's fuzzy, it's soft. Uh, you've got chrome, which is shiny and ugly. I personally can't stand the chrome ones. I think they're hideous. But anyways, moving on, you've got um, four letters that you're gonna see a lot are GITD, which stands for glow in the dark. Don't really think I have to explain that one. It's pretty self-explanatory, but in case you need me to, it glows. Uh, then you've got diamond and glitter kind of coexist with each, with each other. Sorry, I had a little bit of a, well, a little lisp. Sound like the sloth from Ice Age. But uh, diamond and glitter, they they just shine. They're sparkly. They're diamondy and glittery, but. I personally prefer the, the glitter ones over the diamond ones. And then you've got um, metallic. So it's metallic. It's it's just, it's similar to chrome, but it's not all one color. It's just shiny paint. I don't think I missed anything that would fall under the features category, but uh, if I did, just let me know down in the comments below. Let's talk about Funko sizes now. So you're gonna run into a lot of different sizes because Funko, has really branched out. They don't really stick to just um, the common sizes. Like there used to be just four inch, six inch, 10 inch. That was kind of it. You know, there every once in a while you'd run into like a, a ride or something that was a different size. But uh, just to run through the sizes that I could think of at least, there's your, you know, your regular four inch, you got a six inch, there's 10 inches, there's 18 inch ones. Uh, some of the really older ones like, um, I think like the old Buzz Lightyear is actually considered a nine inch. Uh, there's video game covers, there's comic book covers, there's movie poster ones that are huge, like the Cinderella, I think there's like a Snow White, there's a big Star Wars one. Um, you've got Pop Rides that are all different shapes and sizes, like they don't just come in one standard box. Same with like the Pop Towns, uh, the Moments, so it's really hard to just talk about, you, you can't really cover all the sizes that Funko makes. We will have a little show and tell though. We're gonna have a little hands-on moment here. I'm gonna show you some of the different sizes I have in my collection. Um, so obviously the, the most common popular one is the four inch. This is the four inch Charizard. This is your standard Funko Pop. Um, most of them are four inch and then you can move to the six inch of like Jiraiya here, signed by David Lodge. This is a Pop Rides, but this is the, this would be considered a six inch category. Then we've got, uh, we've got the video game covers of Geralt from The Witcher 3. Uh, they, these also come in different sizes. You know, they get this big, this big, this big like all different sizes of these, but this is a great example of what it looks like, the general shape of it. Uh, just look out for different different sizes. Then we've got 
this one, which I'm not really sure what size this would be. It's just a different shaped box. This is the Thunderjaw from my favorite video game, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, it, I just wanted to show it because it, it's kind of like the same size as a six inch, but it's sideways. So not really sure what it would fall under, but it's a great example of all the different varieties of Funko Pops. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I don't own any 10 inch. I definitely don't own any 18 inch. I do want to get the 18 inch Darth Vader, but that's besides the point. Um, I don't really think there's any sizes that I missed. I'm sure there are, because like I said, there's a, there's a lot of them. Um, it's really hard to get to hit them all, but I, you know, the ones I showed, I think, I think they're pretty cool. I can also give you a little out of box size comparison too. So this is the six inch uh, Kisame from Naruto. And then you can compare with a four inch. So this is the four inch Neji from Naruto also. Um, so you can see pretty drastic size difference. So six inch, four inch, it's definitely a lot bigger. That's what she said. <laughs> I think now would be an appropriate time to bring up the Funko Sodas, which I personally love. I There are some Funko Sodas that I actually like more than regular Funko Pops. I know that's crazy because a lot of people can't stand sodas, but Funko Soda, this is what it comes in. Soda cans, unless you're from Michigan like I am, this would be a pop can. But yeah, Funko Sodas, super fun. Most of them have a Chase variant, so this would be what they look like. This is the Joker Chase. So you notice they're just kind of in just like a standing pose. There's not a whole lot of uh, sodas that come in like an action pose. Like the 4-inch Neji you can see is in more of an action pose, where the Joker's just kind of standing there with his hands by his side. Um, mainly because they don't have a whole lot of room to work with in the can. Like you've got to get it to fit. So if it has a lot of action and motion going on, it's not going to fit in the can. But another one I can show you is just the common Ochako from My Hero. As you can see, just the straight up and down pose. But they're, they're so fun. I love them. As I said, most of them have chases. A one in six shot at a chase. I, I just think they're really fun to open. Another term you're going to hear thrown around is three liter. So this is a three liter soda. This is considered a Funko soda. So when you hear the term three liter, this is what they're referring to. Comes in this huge pop bottle or soda bottle, excuse me. Um, they're really fun, just like regular sodas. They have a chase variant. So the bottom pops off here. I'm not gonna do it because it's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, you just push all the tabs in and then the bottom pops off. And this is what they look like. So this is the Darth Vader. It's huge. So if you compare it to the Joker here, you can see the size difference. Very large and in charge. Sorry. But yeah, I like the I like the three liters. I will say they take up a lot more space. So keep that in mind when buying them. Um, it's kind of like buying a 10 inch or an 18 inch. They do take up a lot of space. And then one other thing that we got to talk about you're gonna hear the term pog. So each soda, whether it's a regular or a three liter, they come with a pog. This is the pog for the Joker chase. So you can see it's a different color. I'll show you, this is the Vader one. So see how it's white on the background? The chase is gonna be a different color. And then they have the piece counts, if there is a piece count on the back. So another term you're gonna run into is, is pog. So just keep that in mind. When you hear the word pog, they're referring to Funko Sodas and not Pogs from the 90s. And if you don't know what Pogs are, then I'm sorry because you missed out on an incredible era being the 1990s. Super fun. We're gonna fire through these next ones pretty quick because I feel like they're pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you would like a little more detail on any of these particular, these are all abbreviations. So if you want more detail on them, just comment down below. I'd be happy to explain it further for you. But these are gonna be uh, abbreviations you're gonna run into a lot on Facebook and Instagram for like trading and, and selling of Funko Pops. So first things first is gonna be ISO, which is short for in search of. Then you've got NFS, which is not for sale, or NFT, which is not for trade. 
not to be confused with NFT Funko Pops, which is a category of Funko Pops that are redeemable from tokens. And uh, I don't know a ton about NFTs, but there's a lot of video. I know Gaslocast does a great one about them. But yeah, don't get NFT confused with the NFT Funko Pops. NFT is not for trade. And then you've got FS, which is for sale, and FT, which is for trade. Then you've probably heard it before in other realms too, like it's not exclusive to Funko Pops, which is OG, which would be original. A lot of Funko Pops, the, the first print run is more desirable. So if the stamp on the bottom is a newer date, uh, sometimes people don't want that one. They want the OG or original one. And then you've got uh, something that's really happens a lot during uh, new movie releases or, or conventions, which is FOMO which is the fear of missing out. Don't give in to FOMO during conventions. You're gonna find the shared exclusives. Just remember, fear of missing out, you're not gonna miss out most of the time. A couple ways of protecting your Funko Pops that you're gonna hear terms for is a, a hard stack and a soft protector. So this is what a soft protector is. It's a thin, this is a 0.5 millimeter. Uh, sorry, it's really dusty, but this is the EV. This is in a soft protector from vaulted vinyl. There's a ton of different companies that make these. So just pick and choose as you will. I really like vaulted vinyl. I also really like the chalice soft protectors. Um, but yeah, if you hear the term soft protector, they're referring to the thinner, um, not as durable protector. It's kind of soft. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different great companies out there that make those. So don't think that you have to stick to one or the other just because someone says one's better than the other. I've come across a lot of them that I really enjoy using. The other term I just used was hard stack. So that is the really thick uh, plastic or um, poly protectors. These are for like your grails. Um, I got this Chase Ichigo in the vaulted vinyl legendary. Uh, this is a very expensive hard stack. Personally, I don't recommend it. I know I have one and I'm telling you I don't recommend it. I pre-ordered these when they first announced them. It's a great pop protector. It's very clear. It's very crisp. Like I like how it looks in it, but they're like 30 bucks a piece. So I only have two because they come in two packs. It's a great, it's a great protector. If you've got the budget for it, go ahead and get it. It's awesome. It's super durable. My go-to is the seven bucks a pop. Uh, pop armor, they're great. They're affordable. The only other one I can think of off the top of my head that's a hard stack would be the Funko one, which I don't recommend unless you like putting your pops in a piece of plastic that's going to crack if it barely hits the floor. Don't buy the Funko branded ones. They're garbage. I kind of saved the best for last because we're going to talk about the last two terms that I could think of uh, would be piece count or limited edition or, and then grail. Obviously you gotta talk about the word grail. You hear it all the time. Um, this one is the Darth Maul Freddy, glow in the dark. This is 2000 pieces. So it has a piece count and it is limited edition. This is also a grail. This is a monetary grail and a personal grail to me. I'll never get rid of this pop unless I'm like dirt broke and I have to sell it. But I hope that never happens because I pulled this myself and I love it. But anyways, so yeah, piece count, Again, self-explanatory, there is a certain limited number of that Funko Pop out there, only 2,000. There's a lot of different piece counts, 24, 36, 1,500, but piece count just means it's a limited run. And then Grail, uh, I'm not going to get too detailed into the, in the, what the meaning of Grail is, but you're going to hear it a lot. I would just say that the true meaning of a Grail is very opinion based. It's not, you know, one person's grail could be super expensive. One person's grail could be super cheap. Just something that is very nostalgic for them, which is most of my grails are just kind of nostalgic. Um, just keep that in mind when you're when you're like talking about grails. Don't let someone intimidate you and convince you what to believe that what they think is a grail is what everyone should believe is a grail. Um, it kind of drives me crazy when I see people telling other people like, oh, you that's not a grail. Like, you can't call that a grail. Just remember, 
it's super opinion based. We're just going to leave it at that. If you want to consider something in your collection a grail, that's fine. But a grail is just something that means a lot to you that's in your collection. That I think that's a good a good way of describing it. That's probably going to wrap it up for today. I think we did a pretty good job of covering all the different terms and lingo and abbreviations that are used around the Funko Pop community. Uh, feel free to like the video. Comment down below, again, if, if you found something that I missed or that I didn't talk about. Or don't hesitate to comment if you need some further clarification on something. I'm more than happy to help you understand uh, different different terms, different lingo that might be used if you're not 100% sure what I meant by something. And then just uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching and have a good night. Oh yeah, don't forget, you gotta be kind to each other.